Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is start to apply Toolpath using 1CNC Mill Express. Now, in the last video, we created the geometry. And since then, all I've done is I've just created an extra hole that's 30 millimeters in diameter, and I placed it at the very center of the pocket. And if you look down here, I have a cross-sectional view that shows the depth of the pocket at seven millimeters and showing the circular pocket passing all the way through the part. All right, so to begin with, let's create some stock. I'm gonna turn our print layer off and let's zoom in just a little bit. Now, to create stock, I'm gonna use just a very simple rectangle. Let's go to line, select rectangle, and I'm just using the left mouse button to grid point snap a very simple shape. All right, so your stock really can be any shape that you'd like, and you can use coordinate input if you want, but just to speed things up for this video, I'm just grid point snapping a rectangle. All right, so for our very first toolpath, let's apply a facing operation. I'm gonna take my cursor, head over to the Command Manager, click the Home button, and then Stock Toolpaths. From there, we're gonna select the facing operation. Now, 1CNC wants us to select the geometry, the stock that we'd like to apply the facing operation to. I'm gonna take my cursor and just hover over the rectangle and simply left-hand mouse click. When I'm done, I can right-hand mouse click. This brings up our very first dialog box, which is select a tool. This is where we define a tool. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can select a tool from the tool library, or you can manually create a tool. In this example, I'm gonna show you how to manually create or define a tool. All right, let's head over here to the right. We're gonna say that the tool's in turret position number one. I have an RPM set at 1200. And then for feed rate, I have 290 millimeters per minute. Now this feed rate is the feed rate that gets applied in X and Y. The plunge feed rate, which I have set at 145, that's any time the tool feeds in Z, this feed rate will be applied. Very good. All right, let's come down here now to tool holder. You'll notice that I'm using a 2220 face mill adapter for the tool holder. Now you can use any of these preset tool holders if you'd like, or if you want to, you can parametrically create a tool holder by clicking on edit holder. But for now, we're gonna use the default and we'll simply click okay. Now over here on the left, this is a representation of the tool holder and the tool. Now these parameters, overall length, flute length, and diameter are also gonna be dynamically updated over here on the left. Let me give you an example. Overall length, that's how far the tool extends past the tool holder. That's set to 40, but watch what happens if I change this to 30. We'll type in 30, and now you can see the graphics automatically update. The flute length, that's represented by the gold area here. I have that set to three, but if I change that to five, you can see the flute length also dynamically updates. The same holds true for diameter. We're gonna be using 50, but watch what happens if I type in 40. This all dynamically updates, which is very, very nice. All right, and then the last thing we see here is name. This is really just a note that's going to appear inside of the CNC code. Right now, the default is called facing, but you can erase this and type in anything that you'd like. Okay, let's click on next on this. Now, the next dialog box is the clearances dialog box and this is where we set up our clearances. Now let's talk about what we're seeing here. This gray plane, this gray rectangular plane, represents Z0. The rapid plane, which is defined by this red grid, that's the safety plane. That's the Z level the tool is going to move to if it has to rapid from one location to another. Now again, that's defined by the red grid. If I change this to 20, for example, watch how the red grid hops up above the gray plane there. Let's put that back to five millimeters. Now plunge clearance, that's where the tool is gonna start to feed down to apply the tool path. Now I have this set to one millimeter, but this is also dynamic. If I were to change this to two, I want you to watch the black corners there. 
those represent the plunge clearance. If I change this to two, you're going to see how those hop up a little bit there. All right, so this is all very nice dynamic feedback. For material Z top, I have that set to zero. That's represented by the blue grid, and you'll see how that's right on top of that gray rectangular plane. And the final Z depth, that's also designated by a blue grid. If I were to change this to minus 20, for example, you'll see that blue grid hop down there. So very good feedback. Let's put that back to zero. I think that all looks good. We'll take a look at these other options in another video, but for now, let's leave the default alone and click next on this. Now the very next dialog box is the face dialog box, and this is where we set our parameters for the toolpath. Now the approach distance, I have that set at 110% of the tool radius. This is simply the location that the tool is gonna position itself away from that stock boundary when beginning the toolpath. For toolpath angle, we have that set to zero. That simply means the toolpath is gonna to be horizontal. Then we have a step over. I'm using 75% of the tool diameter. And down here, you can see the equivalent in millimeters as well. Now, if I were to change this to 50, watch how that changes. And if you don't wanna use a percentage, you can always uncheck auto step over and type in the actual millimeter amount for the step over. I like using a percentage of the tool diameter. Let's put that back to 75%. For the toolpath type, we have spiral for facing, zigzag, and then one direction. I'm gonna use one direction and climb cut because this is gonna give us a better surface finish. Very good, let's click finish on this and let one CNC generate the toolpath. All right, so notice over here within the NC manager, one CNC has added the facing machining operation. Let's take a look now at simulating the toolpath. To do this, I'm gonna right hand mouse click on the facing operation and select simulate rest. From there, we're going to define the stock by using pick a boundary. That's because we wanna pick this rectangular shape we created. Now for the top of the stock, I have that at 0.7 millimeters, and for the bottom of the stock, I have that set to minus 12 millimeters. Essentially, that gives us a stock thickness of 12.7 millimeters. Let's click OK to that. I'm going to take my cursor and left click the boundary and then right hand mouse click. All right, so here we can see our facing operation. We set the parameters to climb cut and remove material in one direction. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Very good. Now we're going to talk more about the simulation parameters a little bit later on in this video, but let's carry on with the additional toolpath. Let's take a look now at performing a pocket operation. We're going to head back over to the command manager, select high speed pocketing. I'm going to take my cursor and left click on the rectangular pocket and then right hand mouse click. Now, just like with the previous machining operation, the very first dialog box is select a tool. Now, in the last example, we manually defined a tool. In this example, I'd like to show you how you can select a tool from the tool library. Now, you can access the tool library by left-clicking on the tool graphic, or you can left-click where it says Tool Changer. I'm going to left-click Tool Changer, and now we're inside of the library. Now, the very first tab is called Recent. This shows you the recent tools that have been used. If you want to use one of these tools, select the tool, and then click OK. However, if you want to access the library, click on the Library tab. The first thing you'll note is that all the tools are categorized into different groups. I'm going to select the End Mill group. Now from here, you can edit tools, and you can add tools and delete tools as well. For this example, I'm going to select a 10 millimeter high-speed end mill. Now also notice that within the tool library, notice how the amount of flutes are specified as well as the chip load. This is important. Let me demonstrate. When I click OK, notice how the speeds and feeds flash yellow and they're automatically updated based upon the amount of flutes, the chip load, and the actual material of the part. If we come down here to where it says stock material, we're using aluminum billet. But if I left click this, to access the material library, 
We could, for example, change this to nickel. I'm going to left click and click OK. And now the speeds and feeds are recalculated using the nickel material. Let's go back into the material library. I'm going to left click. I'm going to scroll down, select aluminum billet and click OK. And once again, the speeds and feeds are automatically updated. Very powerful. Now I'm going to change the turret position to 2. And if you want, you can override these values if you want. I'm going to round this down to 3800. I think that looks great, so let's click Next on that. And again, our next dialog box is Clearances. That's exactly what happened on our previous machining operation within Facing. So for Clearances, I'm going to use the same Rapid Plane, the same Plunge Clearance Plane, but for Final Z Depth, I have that set to minus 7 millimeters. I think that looks good, so let's click Next on that. The next dialog box is called Machining Style. Within Mill Express, you have four different styles. We have High Speed Closed, High Speed Open, Traditional, which is a concentric style toolpath, and then High Speed Zigzag. Let's go with High Speed Closed. I'm going to click Next on that. Now we're going to take a look at the Entry and Path settings. For Approach Style, we can Plunge, we can Ramp Helix, or Ramp Zigzag. For this example, I'm going to use Ramp Helix. And notice how the default ramp angle is set to 3 degrees and the helix diameter is set to 10. Something else that's very important to note is that 1CNC provides a ramp helix diameter minimum and maximum value down here. Very nice. Now if you'd like, you can optimize the arcs by selecting Prefer Toolpath Output as Arcs. And that's exactly what I have checked. And for Entry Position, we have Automatic. But note that you can also select and determine a start point if you'd like manually. But for this example, let's just leave it set to automatic. We'll click next on that. Within rough settings, I have the automatic step over set to 75% of the tool diameter. This works exactly the same way as we saw within our facing operation. If you don't want to use a percentage of the tool diameter, you can uncheck and type in an actual value if you want. But for this, I'm going to use 75% of the tool diameter. We can take rough depths of cut, but I want to machine this at minus 7 millimeters, so I'm going to uncheck rough depths. For leave on sides, I am going to leave 0.25 millimeters of stock on the walls of the pocket. Tolerance looks good. We don't have to worry about wall taper because the walls of the pocket are straight up and down. Now let's click Next on this. Now within the Finish Settings dialog box, we have the ability to perform a finish pass. Now if we wanted to, we could select this to bottom only. That would perform a finish pass that would remove this amount of material that we left on the walls of the pocket. I really don't want to do that. I'm going to put this back to none. And the reason why is because I'm going to use a separate tool to remove the remaining stock on the walls of the pocket. All right, so let's leave this set to none. We'll click Finish and let 1CNC generate the toolpath. All right, so now let's perform a profile operation to remove that material that's left on the walls of the pocket. I'm going to head over to the Command Manager and I'm going to select Profile Basic. Notice how there's two types of profiles. There's Profile Basic and Profile Advanced. Profile Advanced is used when you're using tools like a bullnose end mill or a ball in mill where you've got a fillet at the very bottom of the tool. Profile Advanced is also used when you're machining pockets and you want to use advanced taper options. But for this, let's just keep it simple and use Mill Profile Basic. Again, I'm going to select the pocket, but now I want to select the pocket where I want to start the profile operation. Notice how my cursor says Start. I'm going to left click. Once I left click, I have these arrows. These arrows determine the side and the direction of cut. I want a climb cut on the inside, so I'm going to left click that arrow. Now my cursor changes to end. 1CNC wants to know which geometry designates the end of the profile operation. Well, I could click here, but a shortcut is just hit the F3 key on the keyboard, and that will select the rest of the geometry. Now I can right hand mouse click. And just like with all the previous machining operations, the very first dialog box is Select Tool. Now, I'm going to be using a different tool for my finish pass, 
but I want to use the same parameters. So all I need to do is just change the turret position to something different. And you can see I have it set to three. So even though my tool parameters are identical to the same tool I used here, by putting in a different turret position, I'm instructing one CNC and the machine tool to select a different tool for the profile operation. I'm going to say all this looks good, though I am going to up the RPM to 4200. We'll click next on that. I'm going to use the exact same clearances and depths that I use for my pocket operation. We'll click next on that. Now we can ramp profile, but we don't need to do that. We're just going to take it using cut levels. We'll click next. Don't need to worry about auto step over. Don't need to worry about rough depths because I'm just going to machine this at minus seven millimeters. Leave on side zero. That's because I want to remove that extra material that was left when performing the pocket operation. Don't need to worry about these parameters down here. We can click next on that. We don't need an extra finish pass. We'll click next. And for lead in and lead out, I am going to arc on and arc off. This is how we approach and exit the profile operation. For lead in, I have line arc. For the lead in radius, I'm using three millimeters at an angle of 45 degrees. For the exit values, I'm using the exact same parameters. And by the way, as a shortcut, let me show you something. If we had something different here, you can always click the Chevron button and that will make sure that your exit values equal the entry values. I think that looks great. So let's click finish and let one CNC generate the tool path. Now this training video is getting a bit long. So why don't we finish this by performing a tool path simulation? I'll take my cursor back into the NC manager. I'm going to right hand mouse click and select simulate rest. And just like before, we'll use the pick a boundary with the exact same parameters for our stock thickness. We'll click OK. Take our cursor, left click the stock, and then right hand mouse click. All right, so here's our facing operation. Now we're going to go into our high speed pocket operation. There's our helical approach all the way down to minus seven millimeters, performing high speed machining. And then when the pocket operation is completed, we'll change tools and then perform that finish profile operation. Here you can see we're arcing on, go all the way around and arc off. Excellent. All right, that's it for this training video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.